you guys stand with us? We're going to worship the Lord tonight. Give someone a hug or a slap on the back, whichever.
us eyes to see and ears to hear. Spirit, whatever it looks like, just come and have your way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus.
We just want to welcome everybody tonight. I see a lot of visitors and a lot of people that could have stayed home, and I'm sure you're going to be blessed. God puts together divine appointments, and Facebook's not all bad. I saw on Facebook what our guest speaker had encountered, and I saw our sister, sister Ada Evans commented, I know her, she's a great lady. My wheels started turning. I'm like, ah, oh. me and Ada got together. So through a, a connection of a whole lot of things, our speaker is here. I think she's going to bring revelation. She's going to bring comfort. She's going to bring an assurance. She's going to open eyes. I encourage everybody, if you're six years old or 600 years old, to pay attention to what she's saying, because I know God's brought her here, and I know the word is for us. At this time, we'd like to have Sister Charlotte Holmes come to the front. I'm already calling her sister. She said, I'm just a country girl, and I said, well, then you're at home here. Um, be blessed, sister. I tell you what, I feel like I've been church already. <laughs> Thank you, musicians. I'm telling you, nothing brings the spirit closer and faster than in song. I'm telling you, I am just, I cannot tell you how excited I am to be here. I'm, I've been, um, and is this too loud? Am I too loud? I kind of got a big mouth, so just bear with me. <laughs> oh, good, good. <laughs> well, I just want to tell you that... Uh, I never, ever thought I would be somebody that would be up here talking because I am just a country girl. I hunt. I fish. I mess with the horses. I mean, I'm just Charlotte. So I am nobody special other than I'm a child of the king. <laughs> you know, God is so good. It's like you said, he puts things together. And I don't worry about anything. I used to. But you see, God goes before me. Wherever I go, he's before me. I want to say a prayer, and I'd like for you all to join me. I just can't go into this until I give God the praise and just tell him how wonderful. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you. <laughs> oh, Lord, you have set this place of fire with your spirit. Lord, I felt the minute I walked in here, oh, it's not me. It's you, Father, that's come. God, I thank you. Lord, as I tell this, as I tell this experience, I pray that you not let me take away from, you don't let me add to. Let it be just the way it was and just what you want me to say. Again, be with each and every person here. Open their minds, open their hearts. Most of all, Lord, you touch them. I ask this in your name. Amen. There's just one thing. I, in, in Luke, it says, for nothing spoken is impossible with God. You know, if somebody would have told me, Charlotte, you're going to die, you're going to go to heaven, and then you're going to come back, and you're going to tell people. I don't know if I could have believed that. But I know because my God is who my God is. It also says in Deuteronomy, it is the Lord who goes before you. He will not leave you. He won't forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Because he knows. See, we each, he knows us all so much. He knows every hair on our head. He knew you were going to be here tonight. And I thank him for that. I see some people I know. First off, I have to do my wifely duties. Danny, will you stand up? This is my husband, Danny. He has been with me. We've been together. Well, we've been married almost 50 years. He's seen the hard times, the good times. But I'm going to tell you, when a man lays his hand on you and he'll pray for you, that's a man you better hang on to. And I have, okay, I, I know I hate to do this to all you guys, but all my friends and my best friends, would you all stand up so they can see I brought you with me? That means you two in the back, too.
you know, how can a person go wrong when they got this many prayer warriors that ushers with them? I mean, I'm telling you, I'm blessed. So in September of this 2019, I went to my heart doctor. I've had heart problems. I've had blood pressure problems. You can, any of my friends back there will tell you this. But I went. I went into the heart doctor, and my blood pressure was 234 over 134. He said, she told me, she said, you're not going home. I'm going to send you over to the hospital. Well, that's the last thing we want to do, isn't it, women? But I went. Now, from that point till after I got back from heaven, I don't remember a whole lot. It's funny how God just protects you, isn't it? He said, I guess I was there three days, right, Danny? Three days. They'd come in and give me a little sponge bath and put a new gown on me. Of course, hooked up all them heart monitors again. Danny said, all of a sudden, he said, you fell over in bed. Your eyes were open. You were staring at me. He said, but I knew there was nobody home. He said, Mom, I backed you off in the corner. And I said, I didn't think I was going to get to take you home this time. I didn't know you were going to get to. But then I come above my body. And there was 12 nurses, a doctor, and they were on my chest giving chest compressions. Danny said, for 11 minutes, I didn't breathe. But you know what? In those 11 minutes, I seen a lifetime of glory, a lifetime. The first thing is I smelt flowers. I smelt the most beautiful flowers I've ever smelt in my whole life. I love flowers, but there's no smell down here that compares to the smell up there. Oh, oh man. <laughs> then I heard singing. Now these back here, that's singing. That blessed my heart. They, the angels love it. God loves us when we sing praises to him. I'm telling you, that's where it begins. But this singing was like none I'd ever seen, none I'd ever heard. Gorgeous. And I opened my eyes. And I can remember looking at all that beauty. The flowers, the trees, the grass was swaying with the music. I could see it, just swaying. Then I looked around, <laughs> and I could see the valleys. I could see the hills. I could see the creeks. I could see the rivers. Vast. Let me tell you something, people. Heaven is not boring. Those people, when you get home, <laughs> You're praising God. You're singing. You're hallelujah. I mean, it is nothing like you think it is. I've heard people ask me, they say, well, are they kind of quiet? Do we all wear white gowns and we just walk around? No. No, we don't. We're in our regular clothes. There's parts of heaven that you must wear white gowns. But that ain't it. Ain't part of heaven's not. Then I opened and I looked. And standing Bicker, I mean, tall enough to look down on what was going on, was nine angels. They were the biggest angels. Their wingspan is unbelievable. We can't phantom that. I couldn't phantom that. But as I looked at them, they would take one wing. They would fan it out. Then they'd take the other wing, and they'd fan it out. I could feel the rush of the wind off those wings, along with that fragrance, along with that singing. You know you're in heaven. There's no doubt. And I looked, and yes, the streets are pure gold. Oh, you know. <laughs> if you don't know what's going on, get in your Bible and read your Bible. Stay in the Word, because the Word tells you it tells you what you expect. Then I looked, and I saw the golden gates. They're gold. They're big. They're beautiful. 
And on the other side of that gate, I seen my mom, my dad, my sister, my cousin, Daryl, who and I, him and I were like brother and sister. He'd lost a leg before he died. I seen one of my best friends, Phyllis. Two of her sisters are here tonight. Phyllis Hamilton, her son Brad had died of leukemia. They were there. You see, when you get to heaven, they come to greet you. Your family, your friends. Oh, they're so glad you're home. They're so glad you're with them. I don't know how they know. I don't know if there's like a, God just tells them, hey, Charlotte's coming home today. But they're there. Your grandparents, everybody is there. And they're waving. They're so excited. And I'm going to tell you, if you're not ready to go, you're not going to be at that gate. Is your, is your loved ones going to be sad? No, because there's no sorrow in heaven. But will they know you're missing? Yes, they will. You know, I, t I tell my grandkids all the time, promise me, promise me you'll be in heaven with me. Promise me you'll do that. We will, Mimi. That's my prayer. And see, my friends, I want you all to be in heaven with me because it's fun. It's enjoyable. Oh, oh there's nothing like it. And I looked at Daryl, my cousin. Like I said, he'd had a leg cut off. He was standing there with both legs, both legs. My mom my dad and my sister had been sick. They didn't look sick. They had no glasses on. They looked like they were probably, they were in the prime of their life. They were like 30, 40s. They were well. Oh, and they were so excited to see me. So excited. Then I looked, and at the foot of my mom and dad was this toddler was this little boy. I was a little confused. Who could that be? God says, that's your son. You see, I had a daughter, Danny and I did, and she was about two then, I think. I was pregnant again. Back then, you know, we didn't have a way of finding out what it was. You just were surprised. So I, I miscarried at five and a half months. And back then, they didn't let you hold that baby. They didn't let you bury that baby. And I wanted to hold my baby. So when I miscarried, they held him up. I could see a little dark hair on him. And they said, it's a boy, Charlotte. And I'm going to tell you, I've never been in such a deep, dark depression as I was then. If Danny hadn't have loved me, he couldn't have put up with me. But yet, you see, I still had a two-year-old at home I had to take care of. Huh. It hurt. I mean, if you've lost a child, whether it was a child you miscarried, a child that was born and maybe you lost a little, let me tell you, that baby is in heaven. All these aborted babies, they're in heaven. They're there. There's no doubt. And I'm going to tell you something else. God checks on those children every day. He picks them up. He holds them to his breast. He loves on them. Somebody didn't want them. But God wants them. But there was my baby. Danny and I's baby. He was a toddler. He was sitting at my mom and dad's feet. God, how is that possible? And you know what? He says they grow when they're in heaven. But there's no time. It's eternity. So they grow slower. Again, the depression was terrible. I tried to make believe, like a lot of women do when you lose a child. I just go through the motions for a while. Finally, one day, Danny, Danny said to me, Mom, 
do you not think that I didn't lose a baby too? Oh, well, yeah. But I was so consumed with my own depression. I couldn't look at him and think about him. That was the one turning point in my life. Now, I've gone to church my whole life. And I've heard all my life, God's coming soon. Glory be to God. But you almost become callous to that. You know, you've heard it so much. Yeah, 100 years from now, maybe he'll come. At that point, I seen this bright light behind my mom and dad. So bright. So bright I couldn't look upon it. I knew it was God. I had to turn my face. You said I had yet to enter the gate. I was still on the outside of the gate. But when I covered my eyes, I looked back. There stood Danny. There stood my daughter, my son-in-law, and my two grandkids. And they were crying. You know, we cry over our loss. And that's normal. God knows we do that. But I'm telling you, there's no reason to cry. Cry for a while. Cry for a season. And then release them. Release them. Because if they were a Christian, when they left this world, they're in glory right now. There's no doubt, no doubt. And I said, but God, I wanted to see Shay get married. And I wanted to see Brody get married. And he said, Charlotte, you have a choice. You can stay home or you can go back. And I've had several people say to me, why? In the world, would you come back? I don't know. But God knows. You see, God gave me a choice, but yet I feel that the choice was already made for me. Because he knows you've got other stuff to do. You've got something God wants you to do as a Christian. I don't know if he thought, well... Charlotte's just crazy enough to go about with it. Or maybe that I'm the mouth from the south or whatever it is. But he said, you go. You go back. But if you go back, you have to tell my story. You have to tell what you saw. You have to tell what I tell you. And you must, you must bring others home. That's what us Christians are supposed to do, isn't it? Tell the good word. Tell of God's glory, of his grace, of his mercy, of his love. And bring home as many as we can. He said, I'm coming soon. You know, and again, like I said, I've heard all my life he's coming soon. But I knew that moment. That moment. It's not long, guys. It's not long till he comes back. You know, all you have to do is read Revelations. See what's coming. And know that this world is horrible. World worse than Sodom and Gomorrah could ever be. And he says, I'm coming. You're going to hear that trumpet sound. And I'm coming to get my bride, the church. And I'm bringing you home. Now, guys, we don't have long. I believe that. I don't know if God will take me before that trumpet sounds, but if he takes me as I'm headed home tonight, <laughs> don't grieve for me because I'm home. But I'm telling you, it's hard on the ones left behind, but he has given every one of you a job to do. He says, go boldly. Boldly, he don't say, when I ask you to lead the singing, mm, no, not me. 
when I ask you to teach a Sunday school class, mm, no, not me. You see, he says, go boldly because he goes before us. God don't make mistakes. He just doesn't. So I went. He did tell me while I was there. <laughs> he said, you're going to start seeing angels. You're going to hear angels. You're going to talk to them. That didn't, wasn't in my head very clear. And afterwards, Danny said, this doctor come in, give me a shot. Danny said, I could see your blood pressure start falling. Now, Danny's backed up in the corner. He's thinking I'm not going home with him. He said, all of a sudden, you blinked an eye. And he said, she's back. She's coming back. When I come back, I was crying. Danny said, Mom, what are you crying about? So she said, did you smell it? Did you smell those flowers? Can you imagine? He said, no, Mom, I, I didn't. I think he kind of thought that my mind wasn't quite right then. But <laughs> Then as they, t they decided to take me straight on to ICU. In the meantime, on my way to ICU, my daughter and my grandkids got there. Crystal, my daughter, said, Mom, the first thing you said is, did you smell them flowers? She said, oh, Mom, I don't like flowers. She don't. So I don't know what she'll smell when she gets up there. But, <laughs> but I'm going to smell them flowers again. <laughs> anyway, so I went back. I could not keep my mouth shut. I mean, I'm telling everybody. Every nurse that come in, I'd say, did you hear? Did you hear? The doctor come in. Now, during this time, they said I had pneumonia. They brought the x-ray in, showed it to Danny. It was about this size on my lung. That evening, the doctor come in and told Danny, he said, we're going to take another x-ray just to see how the, the pneumonia is. And he said in a few minutes, he'd come back. He said he had two x-rays. He said, I want you to look at this one. Because you see, this one, and Danny said it showed the pneumonia, showed this spot on my lungs. The one that was taken earlier had nothing. God healed me of that. You tell me that God can't do what you want him to do? If you ask him and you believe him, you believe that he can heal you, you believe he can save you, any of this, he will do it. Because he asks us three things. He says, ask. Then he says, believe. <laughs> Sometimes people can't believe. Oh, I hope he heals me. Yeah, I hope my finances get better. Oh, boy, you know, I'm not feeling good. I'm probably sick again. <laughs> what faith is that? He says, stand on my word. Get in that word because that word is what will see you through. That builds your faith. Then he says, the third thing he says is praise me. Oh. Did you see how this felt here? today, and you guys get it all the time. We do it. We're lucky at our church, too. But when you're praising God, you know, it's like, whoa. I mean, I want to, I, I have to contain myself because I want to dance. I want to shout. I want to praise God. In fact, right now, I want you guys to praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is here. 
the first time they asked me to come speak someplace, it was at Pontiac, Missouri, at a women's conference. Man, I was nervous. I just fretted, and I worried. And I told Danny, I said, what am I going to do? You see, I wasn't worried about the story that he gave me, what he showed me, but I had never opened a service before. I'd never given an altar call before. I mean, I've seen plenty of preachers do it, but I hadn't done it. So Danny built me a prayer closet a long time ago. So I'm sitting in that prayer closet on a Friday night because I had to go speak on Saturday. And I'm praying. And I'm flipping through that Bible. And I said, but God, but God, all of a sudden, I hear a voice say, what are you worried about? I went, what? I opened my eyes because, see, I thought Danny had walked in. There stood before me an angel. God had said, you'll see angels. God has said, you'll talk to angels. Don't ever doubt what God tells you. I said, well, I'm worried. I don't... I'm not sure how to do this, and I don't want it to be about Charlotte, because you see, I'm nothing. I want it to be God's will. I want it to be what he wants it to be. And he said, did he not tell you to go? Yes. Did he not tell you he would go before you? Yes, he did then what are you worried about? That's like all of us. What are we worried about? God goes before us. God is right there. And I said, you're right. I have never been worried one time. And believe me, I've been to several places. But God always goes before me. He always knows who's going to be here. He always knows what he wants me to do. But you, I have to have the heart, just like you. We have to have the heart to see what he wants us to do. Sometimes you just got to turn this off. Turn this on. And if you've talked very much to God, you know that voice. That's that little voice. But I'm telling you, sometimes it's not a little voice. Sometimes it's a loud voice. And there's been times when I've not listened, when God would say, I want you to go talk to so-and-so. I want you to do this. Oh, but God, you know, they probably don't want me to. I'm going to tell you what, God will take you out behind the woodshed and whip you. He will. He puts that on you. And you say, why? Why do I not just listen? Why do I not just believe? That's our duty. So since that time, I see angels everywhere. I see some people's guardian angels. I laughingly say my husband has a, his guardian angel is a woman. She's little, and I pray he don't set on her sometime. <laughs> but I do. I was telling some of the women here, when I walked in the church, walked in here, they were singing, y'all were practicing. Oh, this place was full of angels. Full of angels. Angels love music. They come to that music. And if you think all of them have wings, they don't. Not all of them. If you think they don't move with the music, you're wrong. They dance with the music. They praise with the music because they're praising their Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. Oh, oh, oh. oh. I want you all to close your eyes for just a second. Each of us has our own image of what we think an angel looks like. In your mind, I want you to think of that angel. I want you to imagine that angel walking beside you. 
I want you to imagine smelling the flowers. I want you to imagine that beautiful music. Now open your eyes. Did you see it? Let me tell you, it's a million times better than what you can imagine. A million times. I wish I could just lay it out for you. I wish I could lay out what I've seen. You know, if I'm talking to so many people, so many people have different stories to tell. So many people have gone to heaven, but they won't talk about it because they said I thought people would think I was crazy. That's not why God lets you go. That's not why God comes to you in the middle of the night and he showed you something. That's not why God performed that miracle on you for you to keep your mouth shut. Because you say, it's our duty to spread God's word. It's our duty to spread the love. So tell your story. I have to tell you, Danny and I have had several messages. Too numerous to count. We've been up sometimes 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning reading praying, crying. There's a world out here that is hurting. There's a world out here that needs hope. There's a world out here that's waiting for us to tell them what God does. Nothing's too small. Nothing's too big. Just like there's nothing too big or too small that God can't take care of. Because he goes before us. <laughs> oh, does he ever go before you? You know, they call me from the newspaper. This happened in September. I shared it with my own church. Hadn't talked about it except to anybody that would stop. I mean, I stopped the mailman on the road. I'd stop anybody in town and country. Anybody that would stop for five minutes, I'd tell them. Have you heard? Have you heard what God did? did can, have I told you? Can I tell you? Well, I noticed people started shying away from me. I'm not sure how that is. No. no, they were very welcoming to it. But in reading some of these stories that Danny and I have read, my heart's been broken. I could tell you stories. But you'd weep. You'd cry. I'm quite sure there's people here that's got stories that I would cry at and weep with you. But I want to tell you one, one that sticks in my mind. This lady had twin boys. They were grown now. One of them was at a party. He was drunk. He left that party, and he started home. He hit a tree head on. It killed him. His mama went to church every Sunday, every Sunday night, and every Wednesday night. He was raised. He knew better. But that's how fast it happens. And she said, Charlotte, I was broken. I can imagine the pain this woman felt. I cried for her. And she said, nobody knew this. Every time I went to church, I took my son's ashes with me. And I prayed, God, God, if there's any way, any way you can tell me, any way you can show me that maybe, just maybe, he made it. She said, Charlotte, I couldn't eat. I couldn't sleep. But I never told anybody. Never told anybody. She went to her church service one Sunday. She said, I had his ashes in my purse. She said, I cried every Sunday. I cried. Every Sunday night, I cried. She said, there was an evangelist there that Sunday. 
She said, after it was done, he said, he'd come to her. And he says, ma'am, you don't know me, and I don't know you, but God has sent a message to you. You see, when he hit that tree and he was burning, he cried out to me. He cried to me. And I want you to know he's in heaven with me now. Praise God. You tell me we don't have a loving God? You know, there's nothing stronger than a mama's prayers. Oh, God. God listens to mama's prayers. I'm not saying anything against you daddies, but there's something about a mama's prayers. We don't carry those babies for nothing. And I'm quite sure there's people here that's got family members. Maybe it's you. Maybe you're not quite sure. Maybe you're trying to ride that fence rail. You know, I party a little bit, not bad. But then I go to church. You see, that don't work. Because you may not have that chance like that boy did to cry out. Your time is over in a blink of an eye. It's done. You're gone. You're either going to heaven or you're going to hell, and it's your choice. God gave us a free will. but He don't want us to ride that fence. Can I have the musicians back up here, please? You see, now we're at the end of this. And I hope I've touched you. I hope I've even begun to tell you that heaven is wonderful. There's more to this story, but God's not released me to tell that yet. I don't know why, but he says, I will. When God promises you something, he don't go back on it. And I tell you, when you say, here I am, God. Use me. Take me. You better be ready. Because sometimes he takes it way beyond anything you could imagine. I would have never believed I'd have been here. I would have never believed God would honor me to let me see that. I'm telling you, our Savior's mighty. Our Savior loves us. He don't want one of you, not one of you, to walk out that door wanting something. Whether it's your salvation, whether it's for healing, because you see, I believe, as I know this church does, in healing. I believe. Since I've been speaking, Jane Ann and Kenny's been going. I've seen a woman, couldn't walk. She was in a wheelchair. She'd come and wanted to be prayed for. All of a sudden, I heard her shout. I thought, I was rubbing her legs, and I thought, oh, I've hurt her. I'm, oh, I'm so sorry. And I looked up at her. She says, my legs are tingling. <laughs> can God do it? Yes, he can. So we went to greet people as we were leaving. Danny and I did. And I turned to look. She's standing in front of me. She'd taken two steps. <laughs> Woo! If that ain't a hallelujah, praise God. Stomping good time. Went home. I was getting ready. We were getting ready to go to our church that night. And I got a text from her. She said, Charlotte, I walked to the bathroom. <laughs> There ain't nothing my God can't do. <laughs> Last week, we were at a church. Little old sweet woman in her 80s. She said, 
you know, I'm stiff. I can't do anything from here down. I said, do you believe? Do you believe he's going to heal you? She said, yes, I do. Yes, I do. We started praying for her, didn't we, Kenny? Do you know what this little woman that couldn't move from here down did? Up, both of them hands went. She's crying. I'm crying. And she's praising God. Yes, our God can. There's people here that maybe has financial problems. I'm going to tell you, been there, done that. I've been through the depressions. I've been through the hard times. But let me tell you, it's so much better on the other side. There's people here that are worried about their children. We want our children with us. We want them in heaven with us. There's people here who are worried about their spouse. You see, I'm blessed. I have a man that lay his hands on me. I have a man that will pray for me. Sometimes I want to shoot him. Not really. But he's there. He's there with me. If you have that, praise God. If you don't, Boy, get on your knees and pray because God will change them if you have children. <laughs> we have wants. We have needs. I have prayed with more people with depression in the last three months than I ever thought about. Depression's real. That's not made up. It's real. But God don't want us to be depressed. You see, Satan gets right here, and he's constantly in your ear. I had a young lady come to me last week at the same church where this lady got healed. And she said, Charlie, I've done some horrible things. I don't think God can love me. <laughs> oh, let me tell you about my God. <laughs> let me tell you. So I took her off to the corner. She prayed the sinner's prayer. She come to know Jesus. And I looked at her and I said, you know what? You're pure. You're white as snow now. Because when we ask God to come in, he takes those sins and he throws them as far as the east is from the west. They'll never be brought up by him. So if they come up again, that's Satan. You bind Satan and you tell him to get out in the name of Jesus Christ. He's not allowed in your body. He's not allowed in your mind. And then you go forth. We're not perfect. I sin. Because I'm not perfect. But boy, every day, every day I try to be a little better. Every day I say, God, forgive me of the sins that I might know I committed and the ones I don't know I committed. I'm not perfect, but you are. And you walk. You go before me, Father. Now I'm going to ask those that would like to come and up here and stand, because I'm going to ask you guys to come to the altar, because when God showed me heaven and told me I could come back, the one requirement was that I shared. Bring more people home. Pray for. Believe. I cannot close without giving you the opportunity to come. Come meet my Savior if you don't know him. Come be healed. <laughs> He's in the healing business. Come be healed. I'm telling you, he is here. Could you guys sing a song for me? Come, I want to pray with you. In the beginning, you were singing, and me and you still be singing over. This moment, you're right beside me. You're everywhere. You're in the air that I breathe. In the beginning, you were singing. In the end, you'll still be singing over me. In this moment. 
going to have them sing that again or whatever you want to sing but this this I don't do this very often but as as we were praying the Lord began to speak something to my heart and I immediately began to catalog it for a sermon somewhere down the road and then he began to impress on me I want you to share this right now so I'm going to share it right now it's twofold the first one is concerning those of you that have a son or a daughter or a grandson or a granddaughter that you've been believing to be saved. And the enemy, this has been a great source of, of almost fear for you. you. The enemy has hounded you about this. He has spoken lies to you concerning that son or that daughter, that grandson or that granddaughter. And, and as we were praying, the Lord began to speak to me and he said, I want you to tell my people this. First of all, for those that do not believe and do not love me, he said, I will visit the sins of the fathers on the second and third generation. He said, but keep reading my promise. He said, for those that love me to a thousand generations, I will declare my love. So whatever curse the devil may be telling you about, whatever might have been in your past or your grandma's past or your granddad's past or maybe your dad or your mom, you love him. And so any curse that was there has been broken. And now for a thousand generations, you can expect to see the goodness of God in your family. Secondly, the Lord spoke to me and He said He took me back to that jailer, that Philippian jailer, who cried out after he had seen everything happen. And you, you remember the story. He said, what must I do to be saved? And here's what Paul said. He said, believe on the Lord Jesus and thou shalt be saved and thy house. And I said, Lord, everybody knows that. As soon as he spoke that verse to me, I said, Lord, I've read it a hundred times. He said, take this burden off the shoulders of my people. They feel responsible. They, they, they're constantly looking backwards. What did I do? What didn't I do? What did I do wrong? What did I do right? Your only position is to believe. If you believe, not only are you saved, but the Lord through Paul said, your whole household, your whole household, your whole household, your whole household, if you believe, if you'll believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And lastly, here it is. The Lord spoke to me and he said, it's time for his place to move on in to the supernatural. We have prayed, we have praised, we have tried, we have uh, interceded, we have uh, worked our best works and did our best things. He said, now I, I want you to just stand and see what I am able to do supernaturally 
by the Holy Ghost. In other words, you're not gonna, it's not going to be something you conjure, something you work for. He said you're going to stand still and I'm going to move in supernaturally and begin to do my signs and wonders in these last days. Can you believe it? Come on, stand with me. Father, we receive your word tonight, Lord. We believe. We believe for us and for every member of our household. Lord, we love you, and we expect to see your goodness for a thousand generations from right now. Lord, our focus is on you. Our gaze is upon you. And we say you can do anything. So come by the Holy Ghost and work your supernatural works here. In Jesus' name, amen.